Oh, haha, this is the ghost in the machine, Patrick Dugan as a phantasmic sub square on the screen with numbers underneath. Uh, coming at you with the first trade layer DGen digest. And uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of trading talk. So some people like that, I guess. Uh, I'm a guy that you can listen to talk about money because... I'm wearing a jacket. So today we're talking about micro market structure. Okay, so here you got the order book on Deribit. This is Bitcoin wisdom, which I quite like. Um, here you got what I think is the market's uh, momentum center, which is all this activity on Binance uh, and Tether dollars against Bitcoin. So Tether is a weird structural thing where a lot of people treat it like a dollar, but it's controlled by a shadow week of ball of super rich uh, exchange people and, and rich traders um, with specious uh, full reserve backing credibility is probably fractionally reserved. It's a little bit like a derivative, um, but it's not a derivative and the supply changes and it's not an open market thing when the supply changes. So that's weird. And uh, I've noticed that large orders on this book will tend to uh, correlate to short term activity, uh, especially if we're talking about something bigger than just the one or two Bitcoins. So then you hop over uh, to the derivative market on BitMEX, which is still um, largely, it's going to grow us a little coffee. Uh, largely the 800 pound uh, gorilla in the space. Uh, you can see their volume prints are pretty good. We're doing about uh, 10 to 20 million dollars in volume every 15 minutes here, right? So BitMEX still matters. Um, we're gonna talk about perpetual swap funding and futures term structure and a little bit of options term structure in a different video. But what I wanted to focus on today is how around that orbit of Binance and to some extent USD spot trading and Korean won um, as a one. Yeah. Korean won uh, spot trading, Japanese yen spot trading, Chinese uh, yuan spot trading, et cetera. Um, we'll move Bitcoin, but it's largely in peacetime, right? We're not in a 2017 net inflows panic into Bitcoin type para parabolic situation. Usually uh, it's BitMEX and, um, and Tether that control the weight of the market in the short term. Um, and then here's Deribit, which is an exchange that I uh, like to use. Um, not quite as liquid as uh, BitMEX. It's got um, a perpetual swap. I'm going to hop out of this. It's got a perpetual swap that anchors uh, the interest rate around uh, zero. And um, this is kind of nice, right? So I'm hedged with this, but I could also be in a uh, interest rate arbitrage right so if i'm trying to do something in the market that is for a client i'm trying to get their hedge on that's a little bit price sensitive uh, but if i'm trying to do something that is more mechanical like buy a certain quantity of futures sell a certain quantity of swaps or buy a certain quantity of one type of swap and sell another the same quantity of, of this other swap um, then you're price insensitive as far as where you execute. You're only price sensitive relative to the other thing. And what I wanted to sort of teach about market structure in this video is how arbitrageurs and basis traders will create a lot of volume and open interest and in chains across venues, across exchanges uh, in this way. So one one thing of note we got 73 mil in 24 hour volume on this guy against 56 mil in open interest so there isn't that much more volume uh over here uh, than there is open interest 
right? <clears throat> and the reason for that, in Deribit's case, is that a lot of its uh, traders are trying to park in Deribit perpetual swaps in order to do something else, right? Because it's a way to neutralize your deltas, neutralize your directional risk with very little time value carrying costs because it anchors on zero. And here's BitMax. And even though it's projecting negative in 24 hours, because we are trading uh, a little bit negative, as you can see, we're at 7748, index is 7753. That's um, about eight basis points. There's a five basis point band in which it becomes one basis point, which is what we got in the last session. So that's what's queued up over here on BitMax. But on Deribit, it's a real-time deal. And it happens to have also been within the band, and it's been zero. Uh, so you can see there's a nice uh, little interest rate arb over there. And um, I'm going to actually put this trade on in the order book and show you with very few contracts what this kind of looks like um, in terms of microstructure. So here's EMA. P500 is the world's biggest uh, risk market, uh, the global dollarization trade where people who are like euro based investors, for example, will unhedge by dollars, by dollar based assets like the S&P, get a dollar based yield, get a dollar based return. Um, and then if their home currency uh, devalues, it's great. If their home currency gets stronger, that would eat into their returns, but what it's what this has been doing is fueling demand for dollars in a weird virtuous cycle, which is kind of kind of a little bit historically unprecedented where the world reserve currency is getting printed a lot and people just it's just not enough. People just want more of it, right? Um, and then the S P is is sort of this beast. So it's not surprising that risk assets like Bitcoin will tend to uh, shoot, we're running up on 10 minutes here will tend to correlate with this guy. Um, and then we're going to wrap up real quick here. I like to keep these like 10 minutes. Um, so we're going to go with just uh, one mil of it, which is uh, and some change, which is about 10 bucks. And um, the market maker on EMX, uh, who's a co-founder, Jim, is running a bot to create a basic market structure over here on EMX so that this venue can bootstrap uh, its liquidity, right? And he's trading over on uh, CME, so he's able to trade their Bitcoin contracts with low enough friction um, to make this affordable for him. And uh, likewise, he can trade the S&P contracts, the gold contracts, uh, the oils got a little tricky because the term structure, right, the Brazilian um, currency, Euro, can all be traded over there. Um, some of this stuff, uh, ETH and, and LINK and Tezos, uh, they would have to hedge elsewhere. So uh, I'm going to go trade with Jim. And Jim is running a bot. And this bot is quoting uh, in size. And then it's got a tick. So a tick is one increment where price can be quoted. Uh, and I'll, everybody in the biz right now in these days uh, tends to do their ticks in 50 cent increments. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump onto this. Uh, oh, actually, no, I want to buy it. Oh, and this is a better rate. My bad. So, yeah, this is the kind of the good rate that I wanted to get, right? Three basis points and some change in eight hours. You got another one on the horizon that's even bigger. That's kind of hot, right? So I want to do that. Obviously, if I'm trying to like, for an income off of this, I do it in more size, right? But the core operations of trading can be uh, layered, and then an algorithm can just repeat that. That's what algorithms are for, um, whether they're trading algorithms or they're cooking algorithms. So uh, let's go ahead and buy this guy, and I'm going to go ahead and just take liquidity, and I'm going to uh, pay, right? And their fees are a little bit lower, actually, than Deribit. They're about five basis points. And then on uh, this guy, I'm going to um, sell an additional $10. Okay, let me put this on the book. Here on Deribit, this is a multi-sided market where lots of people are competing to try and catch flow. 
And part of the reason why they're incentivized to do that is Deribit has a two and a half basis point rebate for every maker. And here are the recent trades. We have all these prints in different dollar amounts at these different prices at different times, right? And they're all sell side. So that means somebody took liquidity as a seller and they moved the market. They interacted with this structure here. And what often happens is you'll see a situation where um, somebody is quoting thick on one tick and then the next tick is kind of small. So I'd be greatly favored in probability, like just now, for example, to be able to buy this thing as a maker rather than sell it. And then, whoops, oh, now the market balance is a little different. Oh, now we're back to the other thing. Oh. So there are other market makers and traders who are doing a bit of a probability estimation about their place in the universe, their place in the queue. Uh, you can put orders further down here so that when the queue is, is up at this tick, you know, you'll be up in the front line. Um, and of course, the rebalance as you're seeing happening in real time here. So it ain't, it ain't super easy, right? So let's try again. Let's update our order. Now we're 10, 10 bucks on top of this 80 odd thousand bucks. Uh, and then you saw it flash to higher. I'd be in ahead of the line on those guys. And if uh, these market makers are very active in canceling and then replacing, that helps my queue position also. And there you go. Okay, it looks like we're about to get filled. We got filled. Okay, let's jump over here real quick. There's my order. Go ahead and try to hit the lip instead. Normally you would have an algo jump out. There you go. You got it. Okay. So we just booked this trade. Now we should have a little position. There's our, our super, super tiny position. And uh, yeah, this is uh, basically a balance sheet juggling act that I'm doing that will uh, give me a net interest income and uh, that is what I call responsible treasury management uh, especially when you're only doing it with ten dollars but if you're doing it with more balance sheet than your equity you can get a high um, return on margin from the time value without doing directional risk and you instead have operational risk because you have to juggle these things um, and you'd be surprised how much of the open interest in these derivatives are based on these kind of strategies. So that's, that's it for today, guys. See you later.